service. What's up, podcast listeners? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Full Service Podcast. I am your host, Tank Smith. Welcome back. It's uh, <laughs> it's week 12. Week 12, who knew we'd make it? I knew, you knew, we all knew. We never doubted it for a second. Fuck yeah. Um, thanks, thanks for being here. If you're, uh, if you're new to the podcast, welcome, subscribe, rate, review, let us know what you think. <laughs> if you've, uh, if you've been rocking with us for a while, if you've been rocking with us perhaps since the beginning, I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Um, last week's episode was a solo. Um, I don't really remember what happened, but go check it out if you, uh, if you haven't yet. Uh, so... <laughs> I made an offer on the on the uh, last episode. If you cannot afford constancy, I'm I'm all about uh, safe sex out there. Um, if you cannot afford condoms, you have to just send an email to fullservicepod at gmail dot com. Let me know what you think about the podcast, and I will Venmo you five dollars for condoms. Limit eight people. Uh, <laughs> So far, no takers. No one has taken me up on the offer. Um, and I'm not really sure whether or not that's people just really can afford condoms out there. I mean, I feel like I have a pretty employed listener base. Um, or you just haven't listened to the episode yet. That's also a possibility. <laughs> so if you uh, want $5 for condoms, um, hit me up. Uh, send an email, fullservicepod at gmail.com. We, uh, we're also on social media, social media, baby. We got a uh, Twitter. We got Instagram at full service pod. Give us a follow. Go give us a follow. We'll hit you back with that follow. We don't, we don't, people don't follow us. We just, we gotta, I gotta, I gotta hit you with that follow back. So no, I, uh, if you do give us a follow, uh, fucking I'll, I'll hit you back. Um, my personal Instagram and Twitter is tank funkadelic. Give me a follow if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, you definitely don't have to. But uh, thank you for being here. This is um, week 12. Uh, my guest today is Gia Bella of Atlanta. Uh, I'm super excited for y'all to hear this interview. Actually, uh, I did this one at the beginning of November, actually. So it's been a little while, but not too long. Most of these interviews actually took place a while ago. So this is like a recent one. Um, but no, I am, uh, definitely excited. If you don't know, I kind of mentioned it in the last episode. Um, she has worked as an escort. Um, she's done adult films. She's been like over 340 scenes. Um, she's a professional athlete. She's a life coach. She's a medical professional. She does it all. So no, it's, uh, <laughs> I, uh, our, our interview ended up being like three hours. It was just like, it wasn't three hours, a little less than three hours. Um, and so I put a post on Twitter. I was like, Hey, do you want to hear an episode that's like, uh, close to three hours? Or do you want to hear part one, part two people hit me back? They were like, definitely not a three hour episode. So I'm gonna hit you with that, uh, part one this week. And, uh, part two is going to be a little Christmas gift coming at you on Christmas Eve. So, uh, definitely make sure you, uh, you listen to both episodes. So, uh, so it's, it's good. Uh, <laughs> I say that about every interview, but I genuinely feel that way. So fuck. <laughs> no, I'm, uh, I'm excited for you to hear this. Um, go give her a follow on social media, Twitter, baby. Her, uh, her Twitter is Gianna Bella XXX. That is G I A. N N A Bella B E L L A X X X Gianna Bella X X X, and her website is Gia Bella of Your Desire. So uh, check it out. Uh, check out her website. Give her a follow on social media. What are you doing? Do it. Um, but no, this is uh, this is part one of our interview. Uh, part two, like I said, will be next week. So uh, don't text and drive. Slow down. Leave a good car length from the car in front of you. Um, <laughs> but now I hope you enjoy this interview with uh, Gia Bella. All right, thanks. Welcome back to the Full Service Podcast. I am Tank Smith. I'm excited for this episode today. I am joined by Gianna Bella Ferrari. Thanks for being on the podcast. Well, thank you for having me. Just call me Gia Bella for short. Gia Bella, all right. I can definitely do that. Heck yeah, I'm 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 excited. We're uh, <laughs> we're uh, we're in Atlanta. We're uh, we're in Atlanta once again. Uh, I'm excited to be here. Uh, Gia, where are you where are you uh, from originally? 
Uh, I'm from the New England, where it's a hell of a lot colder than it is here right now. Yeah. But you never know the difference between the two places. It got cold really fast, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was like there was like 40 degree, I feel like, temperature drop in the past like, yeah, day yesterday, or so. And it was 60, 70, 80, yeah. uh, I don't know, five days That's ago. crazy. Wow. I do like the cold weather, though, because I can wear sweatshirts. I enjoy a good sweatshirt. <laughs> yeah, you can only take off so much clothes yeah. and still be really hot. Yeah. <laughs> that was the rest of this year. <laughs> How, uh, how long have you been in Atlanta? Um, I believe I broke it down to about six and a half, seven years now. Okay, nice. How, uh, how, do, you, how do you like Atlanta? The traffic sucks. The food is good. The price is right. The weather, until recently, was you know pretty decent. <laughs> you know, it's good to have four seasons versus the, the only two I'm used to. Either hot and hotter than hell or freezing cold year-round. Well, yeah. The pollen, I feel like, how is, did it take use to get into the pollen? Like, do you guys have pollen up there like that? Uh, pollen is everywhere, but I think that uh, Atlanta has 3,000 different genuses and types of trees. So uh, it is rumored and actually has been substantiated now by medical fact that most northerners within three years of moving to Atlanta start to develop allergies. And it's not seasonal allergies. It's year-round allergies because we have so many different trees and so many things blooming year-round oh due God. to our, you know, lovely weather. Damn. That's, but, uh, yeah, so. That is, that's, that's crazy. I wonder if you move out of Atlanta if they go away. I think it does, because I know, like, growing up, I remember as a kid at my church that, like, one of the, we had, like, some, like, pastor come in or something, and his son had, like, after moving to Georgia, had, like, real bad allergies to where, like, he had to leave, and, like, they had to, like, relocate their family, because really the allergies were, like, so bad, they had to move. Well, when I travel to, um, to Hilton Head, uh, a couple times a year for work and such, uh, I always know when I'm driving back, even if it's in the middle of the night, I know when I'm at the Georgia border because I start getting congested. Really? Because I guess with all the salt air yeah. being on the coast, because we don't have a lot of, we don't have any salt here. Yeah. And it like clears you out and it's all great. And then as soon as I hit that Georgia border, two o'clock in the morning, on my way back. I'm feeling this It's already. like, uh, okay, <laughs> I need to pull over and get some Sudafed, some Benadryl, <laughs> some Red Bull. <laughs> Counteract all that. I, uh, your, your, your resume here is impressive. This is, <laughs> this is incredible. Adult film actress of 340 scenes. Uh, you're published in five magazines in four different countries. Um, do escorting as well. Professional athlete. Is there anything that you don't do? Is there? I'm a life coach. Life I've, coach? I'm a medical professional. And, uh, this time next year I'll be moving on to law school. Sweet. That's... I have my dirty little fingers in everything. That is incredible. That's... <laughs> and I look really hot with grease underneath my well manicured nails. <laughs> I'm a car chick, hence, oh. the, hence the street racing over the years. Do you work? Can you? Do you know? Like, can you work on cars or like? Yep, I can change your valve cover gasket, your starter, distributor cap, the whole nine. Damn. Yep. I can't change a tire. I'm not strong enough to, to break the bolts because they use pneumatic and okay. hydraulic tools to put them on. But other than that, because I look really ridiculous jumping on a. A tea bar on the side of the road, and I was like, "Do you need help?" No, I just felt like you know pulling yeah. over and jumping on the tire iron. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I can't change a tire, but I can pretty See, much yeah. change out anything else in the car. I just call AAA. That's 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 all I can do. Yeah, Audi Care. They, yeah. They've, they've come in handy. Time <laughs> too. At least I can't lock my keys in the car like most women. Really? Yeah, I, I always throw them in the grocery bag. Throw the grocery oh, bags in the trunk, close trunk, and it goes eh, and the trunk pops up. I'm like, "What the hell?" Close it again. Does it again. Because it realizes oh, that your your keys, the keys are, are in the trunk. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. That's actually a good, pretty, a pretty good safety mechanism. Yeah. Uh, Only women. It's more of a woman thing, but <laughs> it happens to all of us. I've locked point. my keys in my trunk a lot. I in feel your like. trunk? Yeah. Well, as long as the doors are unlocked, you can climb through the back seat. I don't know. You could fit through that. I could fit through the back seat. Everybody, uh... <laughs> I mean, you can drop it down if you can. You used to be able to climb through the back yeah, seat like the, armrest the, back in the day. The, like in the middle seat, like, yeah. Well, my back seat fold down. I think I could pop through there. <laughs> Maybe poor thing, you'd probably get arrested. Sir, what are you doing? All I can see is your ass in there. I'm just trying to get the keys out of the truck. I feel like I'd be the sure. one to call 911 because I'm like, I'm stuck. This is, uh, <laughs> this is too much. I've had that happen. Please help. <laughs> I've, I've gotten stuck in really strange predicaments before and I had to call for help. Thankfully, not 911. No jaws of life. <laughs> God, there were pictures and video, and I'm like, "All right, you've had your fun. Yeah. Now you get me out of this. I'm stuck. Yeah. I'm literally stuck." <laughs> <sighs> Heck yeah! No, wow, your uh, your resume is impressive. Did you start? Uh, what you start doing first? Did you start uh, adult film, or did you start uh, escorting? Like, what's the timeline? Like, I start. I 
I'm born of a family, long line of models, Barbizon models, for those of you over the age of 50. Barbizon? Barbizon. That was like the uh, 60s, 70s, the L Vogue okay. models. So I come from a long line of models, so I got into modeling Sweet. and, you know, basic commercial work. And uh, then I got into fetish modeling. From there, I was the halftime show at the Adult Entertainment Awards in Tampa back right. in 2005. Nice. 15, 5, yeah, okay. <laughs> Time gets away from you as you get older. Um, that's where I was introduced to Ron Jeremy, who actually offered me the opportunity of being a porn star. So from there, I he set it up, and I was in Cherry Magazine. Sweet. I think it was the April edition. I, I'm struggling to find it, but that was a long time ago. Uh, so he got me a full spread, me and uh, a girlfriend of mine that was with Bondage Vixens. Uh, him and somebody named Kenny Hoyt, which is no longer in the business. Okay. Uh, we got a full spread there, and then he flew me out to the AVNs. I got tested for the first time uh, with uh, a talent testing services or, or whoever. I don't know if they have now. One of them went out of business, but I think it's TTS. And I shot my first film, which is on my website for free. It's the only one you can actually find online for oh, free really? in, in, in full length. Oh, nice. So I put it on my website for everybody to you know, check it out. But uh, from there, it was... It just came naturally because I've always been a natural exhibitionist. You know, I'm used to being in front of a camera, okay. a bunch of people in the room, and you know, center of attention. I just wasn't used to doing it naked. Yeah. But you know, it takes a little getting used to with porn, um, because what you see is not. I hate I hate to ruin it for everybody, but <laughs> what you see is not what you're seeing. I mean, there's 20 people in the room. Uh, like if it's in a hotel or if we're, we're in a warehouse that has staged. Uh, Stage sets. Okay. Yeah, that, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> Stage sets. Um, there's other films being you know, going on. You know, the first couple minutes. That's when you get all the oohs and ah oh babies, and then from the rest of the film, you just have to kind of keep your mouth open. You know, open and close your mouth once in a while. And after when it goes through editing, that's when they dub in. That's oh, not, that's that's not even my voice. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's a skewed version. Something sounds like me, but it's not really like um. One of my, my first video at the ABNs kind of made history. Um, that article's on, on my website, uh, Man of the Loin to Man of the Cloth. If you ever want to look that one up, um, Broad Fontana, his, uh, his adopted daughter got bit by something and she was going to lose her arm and she had MRSA. There are only eight drugs on the market that will treat it. So after seven of the eight, yeah, she's not, they're like, we're sorry, we're going to have to take her arm. And she was so young. I think she was like six or seven. And he went down to the chapel or the hospital and he prayed. And then, oh my God, we're actually the eighth, the last option. Yeah. It happened to work. And he truly don't praise Jesus. Yeah. So he decides to come out at the AVN Awards. This, right after filming this, we go and sit there in our little director's chair. We're being interviewed, which uh, ended up being on the front page of the entertainment section of the New York Times. Really? And my entire family are bankers up in New England, so that was <laughs> awesome. I don't know how I escaped that one, but um, that, that he was making the announcement that was the last video he's ever going to shoot. He, like, turned his light, like, he's like, yep. Jesus is uh, the He like. is an ordained minister, which we thought was kind of a joke, you know, kind of like the, the United Church of Dude, nothing against them. Yeah. But, you know, we thought it was one of those type things. But no, he became like a Baptist minister or something in some remote little town in Vegas. Because that's the only one they would take him because of who he is and what he was. Oh, I guess, yeah. So, uh, yeah, he kind of, like, oh, you know, I'm here with Janet Bell Ferrari. And that is her first video. And, you know, da 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 yeah. And I, I wish her well. And, you know, praise be Jesus. And, you know, you know I, was, I was into it. And we weren't paying attention. Damn. We were watching the football game. Well, that actually was true there's one part of the video where it's like oh baby oh baby yeah no if you look very carefully and watch my mouth it's like i went to outback last night and had the prime minister and oh my god it was awesome <laughs> we are talking about what buffets we've been to while we're there like mgm grand and all yeah. the other places um you know where we're taking the kids on the summer vacation yeah. we're actually having a conversation if you staring over the top of me we're both watching the football game going on that day yeah it was like one of the last games leading up to the super bowl so, I mean, we're enjoying ourselves. We're watching football. There's people by the coffee pot, and they're talking. And, you know, we got Lori Lust and Tatiana Stone walking in because they're doing scenes on the other side of the hotel because we yeah. have, like, a four suite at the Venetian. I mean, we're having a hell of a time. They're doing shots. You know, this one's at the coffee pot. We're watching football, yeah. having a conversation. 
and they yell continuity. That okay, means, that yeah. means freeze. Yeah. Because now every time we change our angle, that means we have to stop and change the lighting. Okay. And so it's not what looks good, and not, and not what feels good. It's what looks good. So anytime yeah. you see, okay, the undershot, what you can't hear is because it's also edited over, um, yeah. is the camera guy whispering, "Please don't slip out. Please don't slip out," because he knows if you slip out, it's going to sling matter. Yeah. Onto the camera lens as well as possibly their face. Oh, I didn't. Oh. So when they're doing that undershot, that's about the only time that nobody's moved, and we just have to keep moving. Just move your leg. You're in the light. Yeah. You know, get your arm out of the way. You're blocking the shot. Okay, stop. Freeze. All right. Now you can see me from the front. That's because we moved all the lighting, all the cameras, everything. But I have to remember where my hand was. Is there a I lot freeze. of start and stops happening throughout the shoots? Like, yes. how does that? What you see is not what you're seeing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he can go 20 minutes straight without putting and he can just come on cue. No, every time we change angles, we stop. Yeah. And there's no fluffer. Maybe there was in the 70s. Yeah. No, Ron Jeremy and John Holmes or whatever his name was. Yeah. No, there's no fluffer. They're standing at the coffee pot, talking to another male star that's you know, filming because yeah. they're changing lighting and shit too and changing the sound. Yeah. Okay, and they're just standing there just, you know, take, holding on to business to keep things. Right where we need it. <laughs> and then we go back into where we were. Uh, like that particular video at the end, most people don't notice the... Uh, <laughs> we had a stunt cock, if you will. Really? The same cameraman from the underside that was whispering, praying, a little prayer, but he ended up with bodily fluids all over his face for camera, ended up having to put on Ron Fontana's pants because of all the start and stop at his age. Yeah. He just... It was like beating a dead horse. Yeah. So, with the cameraman... Is Viagra happening on sets? Or uh, there... we, we can do better than that, especially with old age and blood pressure medicine. Um, but, yeah, the camera oh, guy that was whispering and praying now has to go stand by the coffee pot with the rest of the guys and get into position, if you will, yeah. <laughs> um, so that he can put on Rod's pants and... Just Pretend to be look him. like he's about to pull out of me. Yeah. And oh yeah, now it's time for the pop shot. Okay, ready? And he's looking around, kind of like, "Do you want this POV?" I mean, <laughs> <laughs> he looks lost without his camera. But then again, he's—I don't think he's used to having you know twenty people in the room yeah. walking and having conversations. Yeah. And he doesn't have a camera in his hand. He's got, well, him. Yeah. In his hand. Do but, you have um, to? Pre- do you have to be like? Is he? Do you have to be prepared to like fill in on a set kind of thing? Is that yeah. like a? No, that was one of those, he's beating a dead horse, we're going to be here all day. Yeah, and we can't, we can't. We don't have any other old dudes that aren't already in the video. Yeah. So, can you just, can you fit into his pants? <laughs> Perfect. Slip <laughs> his shorts on, and, oh yeah, baby, come here. Rawr. And it's like, if anybody noticed, it's like, you have white hair on top of your palm, and now you don't have any hair on top of oh, your palm. Oh, sure. And, yeah, there, there's... More than a subtle difference yeah. between the two, but it's that's how we had to finish the video. It yeah, takes an hour to shoot 20 minutes of video. Oh, really? Now, what the, um, you do realize that Viagra actually isn't a, an ED medication. I it was, was like originally it's a blood pressure medication. That's what it says. This may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Make sure your heart is healthy enough for sex. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, if you're already on blood pressure medication... And you have high cholesterol, and you're diabetic, and yeah. you're overweight, and you're all these wonderful things from this luxurious life of porn. Yeah. Yeah. So you probably eat like shit. You're always on the go, traveling. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's got to do. You make a salad when you're in your hotel room. No. So a lot of medical conditions are prevalent. Not like STDs, but you know, true medical conditions. Yeah. Like- Pulmonary hypertension from the stress of all that flying and lost luggage and these <laughs> dipshit bitches that you know they're cute. They're great to look at. They're fun to fuck. Just don't open your mouth unless I'm sticking my dick in it. I put my dick in your mouth because I just don't want you to talk. That's that's the real reason I'm just, shh, quiet. <laughs> the handlebar pigtails, but... Um, no, we have something that's called Trimix. Okay. Um, you know, behind closed doors, you don't necessarily see this, and most men will cringe when I explain this, but uh, you take, basically, a diabetic syringe, and uh, you... You and your urologist and your your GPC will work this out, what works best for you. They shoot you up for the first time to see if it works. And you go, yeah, I can do that. And then they figure out it's kind of like warfarin or blood 
blood thinners. They have to get just the right dose for you because everyone's different. Okay. And they take this little tiny syringe with, you know, one, two, three, you know, cc's. And they put it right there at the base. Squeeze. And 30 seconds to 90 seconds later, you've got yourself a toddler's arm. Really? And I'm like, you know, it's not like, you know, you can hammer nails with it. Yeah. For hours and hours before it's like, oh, great. This is great. I have an erection that lasts for up to two to three hours, not four to six. Oh, okay. that's fine. I've okay. Been, I've been through that one. <laughs> and you can't come. These ones, it's basically, it's basically just, it gives you a good old hard stiffy. Okay. But you can still come. And it, like anything, your body digests it, metabolizes it, and but it stays in that area. It's oh, it, okay. if you want a hard on, inject the pecker. You don't want to eat a pill that's going to go through your entire circulatory system, mess with your heart, I've, filter through your liver, interact with your medications. All of a sudden, now you're flush in the face like you've had too much wine. Yeah, your dick is hard, but you have nothing to do with it. Damn. And even when you're done with it, it's not done with you. But after four to six hours, <laughs> you might want to call your physician or go to your local. <laughs> Where they're going to stick a bunch of needles in there, retract some blood, give some Benadryl, patch you on the head, right. or call me and I'll go, I can get blood out of there. Ha <laughs> ha, this is going to hurt you more than it hurts me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, the, um, for instance, uh, the, the porn star I mentioned earlier, not Rod, um, is a narcoleptic. Oh, shit. So, uh, Rohypnol, Rufis, as most people know it, um, is given to narcoleptics. Narcolepsy is people who will just be having conversations like right now and then... Mm. Pass out, sleep. Cricket, crickets. Yeah. Uh, one of the porn stars is a narcoleptic. Well, you can't take Rufis with Viagra. Because now you have a Brufinol, Rohypnol. Yeah. Which we know what that does to the person who doesn't need it. It's like Adderall. I don't know, if you give speed to somebody who's sped up, it slows them down. If you oh, give sure. roofies to somebody who has narcolepsy, it keeps them from falling asleep. Well, you know, filling it's up like, the coal mine, no driving the train, your Uber driver, good times. Well, <laughs> you really can't take Viagra with roofies. Oh, sure, okay. Because it causes an unsafe drop in blood pressure, and you're already going... I already got the drop in blood pressure. Uh, but my eyes are open. <laughs> so when you have to choose between... Can I fuck 20 porn stars in the next 45 minutes? Yes, I can. When I wake up. Damn. So he had to choose between. I said that's how I met him. Not just a pair of socks, but he was passed out. And the person who I borrowed, the, we call them the porn socks. I still have them, too. Um, I borrowed a pair of socks, and they were rooming together at the AEAs. And he was passed out in the corner wearing nothing but a washcloth. <laughs> like a tent. Damn. And I walk in, I'm like, oh my god, I outpartied so-and-so. And I'm jumping up and down, and I'm like, shit, I woke him. And he's looking around, confused, like, where'd everybody go? He goes, you again. I'm like, thanks for the great advice. He was able to drive my personal vehicle back to our hotel. Yeah. And I got the socks I needed. Share the fast. <laughs> and that's when he made me the offer to, would you like to become a porn star? But yeah, yeah being narcolepsy, medical conditions, you can't take Viagra. Yeah. So they had to come up with something that... These guys can be like, yeah, yeah, I want to press the chicks. And don't end up in the hospital four to six hours later because they're trying to hammer in nails. And, yeah. And the roofing guys are just like, dude, get off the roof. You know? Damn, that's interesting. <sighs> it's fun stuff. How long uh, How long did you do adult films? Well, you said you started in 2005. Uh-huh. Are you still active? Yes and no. Okay. Um, after the Shawn Michaels scare, I believe that was in 2009. Or 10, I swapped over to strictly oral work. What's um, the Shawn Michaels scare? What's... Um, which I, I pigeonhole myself. Well, not pigeonhole, wrong word. But uh, I, I label myself here because it freaks people out when I tell the story until I get to the end. But um, Shawn Michaels had uh, left the country. I believe he went to either Brazil, one of those South American countries. And their testing is not as nearly as good as ours. So he went and he got tested, whatever, and he came back negative and everything's fine. So did she. They, they filmed down there and then he came back to the States and was filming at, uh, with, I believe it was Venetian, uh, which I was also filming with the same, around the same time. Well, all porn stars uh, are tested every 30 days. It's not by law, but, you know, if there's any outbreak, if somebody tests positive for HIV, the entire industry, I don't care what the fuck's going on. We just drop, everything stop, freeze, comes to a halt. Yeah. And everybody immediately goes and gets tested Sweet. to make sure to prevent, you know, the outbreak because, it, you know, we're 
constantly communicable. Yeah. <laughs> Being that a lot of the work was unprotected. Um, well, his test, his test results came back positive. He was HIV positive. Oh, shit. Uh, and they must have missed that. Either he got a false negative. We thought it was a false positive. Now he got a false negative, And now he got a positive positive. Um, and we don't know if it came from her or the testing down there, whatever the, the situation may have been. But um, I get a phone call one day. This is before I uh, before I had moved up here. I get this phone call one day. And I was like, all right, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, is this so-and-so? Yes. Did you film uh, between these days and these days at Venetian at this location? Yeah. Yes, I did. Okay, great. I'm like, does this have anything to do with the Shawn Michaels thing? It's like, we're not at liberty to discuss this. Somebody will get back to you in the next three to five business days with, you know, any further information. If we have any questions, yeah. you know, blah, blah, have a great day. I'm like, ah, that's a little sketchy. Yeah. Three days later, I get another phone call. It's like, hi, is this? Yes. Did you? Yes. We already answered all these questions. Let's get to it. He's like, all right. They gave me a list of 17 names, their legal first names, and their stage names. And I went, well, I look at my roster because... Very organized. They keep track of who, what, where, when, how much I make, the whole yeah. nine yards, you know, for just accounting purposes and health reasons. Great. And I'm like, well, I don't recognize any of these names or their legal names. And I said, no, not to be a bitch, but I'm kind of a snot. I only work with A-listers and some upper B-listers. Okay. You know, household names. So, yeah, I don't recognize any of these names and nobody's in my book. So, oh, great. You know, da -da -da -da. Thank you for your cooperation. You know, just maintain your testing. It'll be fine. I'm like... Well, shit, it's fucking still going to be some and insight. I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, my God, I know I'm HIV positive. I've got AIDS. I'm going to die. And I'm freaking out. So I go on, like, a nine-day bender. I'm going to this 10 days. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I'm on a nine-day bender. I come out of a you know, drunken stupor long enough to answer this phone call. And I'm like, huh, great. You know, no problems. Just maintain your testing. Sorry to alarm you. Do you have a great day? And I'm like, they never did confer to what it was about. But yeah. we all got the email that says, hey, everything's shutting down. Anything yeah. we have scheduled will be pushed out a week until everybody can get tested and there was no outbreak, thankfully. Oh, nice. It was quarantined within him. Okay. You have a lower chance of catching HIV from somebody who's positive in just one or two interactions, generally, okay. statistically, medically. But, uh, yeah, that was pretty scary. Yeah. So I called my managing company. I think I was working for Girls Inc. out of Miami at the time. Uh, so I called Brian up and uh, I was like, hey, listen, uh, I'm not going to do any work that's not unprotected. You know, oral, that's fine. But, you know, I'm not going to do any unprotected, you know, intercourse. I don't do... If it doesn't happen in the average person's bedroom, like, you know, normal couples. Not yeah. married ones, obviously, but normal couples. <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't do it. I'm not into, you know, weird, you know, animals, anal, you know, 10,000 people, gangbangs. Yeah, no. I'm pretty laid back. I always had too much other things going on. I don't think I could have maintained focus. Yeah. But I called him. I said, well, you know, I'm not doing anything unprotected. And, you know, I already don't do this, 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 and this. But um, so he's like, do you realize that you're going to go from a six-figure income down to a teacher's salary? And I'm like, yeah, but are you going to pay for my health care? Are you yeah. going to my hospital bills? You know, are you going to support my family if I die from something that, you know, if some antibiotics or Ajax can't take off? Yeah. He's like, no. And I go, well, wow. then what? from now, this point forward, you're going to find me work. That is within my scope, my parameters of what I feel comfortable and safe doing yeah. until things change. This is before female condoms. And he said, okay. And that was the last time I heard from him. I never got a single call gig, modeling, shoot, nothing from him. Right. From before. Well, I then I discovered sexy jobs. And uh, there's a couple other back there that aren't around anymore. But even on MySpace back in the day. You could be like, you know, hey, looking for girls between this age and this age okay. to pose with motorcycles at this, you know, this biker bar pays a hundred bucks. Well, I'm finding gigs here and there on the internet, Google yeah. in its earlier years. Sexy jobs was a lot of it. I got a lot of modeling work. Nice. I was making more than I was. He was only taking 15%. Well, you make 170000 minus the 15%. Now I don't have to give him 15%. Yeah, no. Still not claiming any taxes. <laughs> If they pay you over six hundred dollars, they're going to give it to you. You know, from this company and this is our sister company and this, yeah. so that they don't even have to claim it because it's under six. So there's no, no. It's like sweepstakes places. Yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. You get like four checks for the total yeah. amount that you they promise to pay you, but that's fine. Now you have verifiable income and no taxes. Fuck yeah. I was making more just finding my own work in the local area. I didn't have to travel. I didn't have to leave the state. I mean, I'm living in Clearwater. Um, now I'm going to drive six hours in Miami. Yeah. Well, it was worth it. I only did that twice. And I've got the DVDs on the shelf right now for that one day. Damn. It was worth it. 
never again can pay him to go back there. Damn. But I was coming to Tampa. I was going to Orlando, Celebration, Jacksonville. Sweet. It was just random places in the state. Sarasota, for Christ's sake. Who would have thought? <laughs> Sarasota. I mean, there's some places that were right there just north and just south of Clearwater and St. Pete. Damn. There's a lot of stuff going on you don't know about until you go looking for it. You ever go to Tierra Verde? Yeah. That's uh, right. I went a couple uh, years on vacation. It's nice. <laughs> yeah, that's right next to St. Pete. Yeah, yeah. Like South Great Africa. oysters. Yeah. Yeah, great oysters, cheap seafood, all fresh caught. I love it. Fuck yeah. But a little snooty, a little pricey, but it's worth it because you are getting fresh catch. Straight up the boat, so. Does it, like, in, like, say you're working somewhere and, like, with the whole HIV scare, if somehow you can track that, is the production company or is anybody liable? Like, does any like, is that on you? Like, to. You are, you are not required by law, by any rule book. It's just good, good etiquette. Uh, All our, when we get tested, our test results are only good for 30 days. Okay. So after 30 days, you say, okay, great. Oh, you want me to be in the scene? No problem. Cool. I need your driver's license. I need a picture of you holding your driver's license next to your face and today's paper to show that on this day, because you can't fake yeah, front yeah. page, and here's your ID that you're you and on this day that you're over 18. So that's for the 2257. Okay. So there you go. Once you get past that part, here you go. Now here's your test results. You put that down on the table. When they do that, because we've, we've had an issue here in Atlanta uh, with... Some porn escorting shenanigans and some test results. Uh, will you give them your test results? Well, there's an 800 number. Yeah. There's an ID number. So you call the 800 number and they do it right on speakerphone. I'm here with, you know, Miss Ferrari. Yeah. Da, 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 test number and the 8 or 18 digit code, whatever it is, across the top of the test results. Great. And they do a live verbal verification. Yes, you know, Test one, two, three, and four were, you know, administered. The results of these tests were A, B, C, and D. Okay. Sweet. Great. Thank you very much. So now they verified. They take a picture of that. And it's all of us. Everybody in that room. All of our test results are on a table. All of our IDs all sitting there waiting so they can fill all the forms for us. So all we do is take our picture, get our, pick up our test results, put them in our back pocket. It's great. Yeah. But if I get tested today, I'm going to have my results back in 24 hours. Yeah, I'm clean. I can go... Through the town. Yeah. So I go out and fuck everything walking. Most of, this, most, most of the men in the porn industry. I'll fuck everything walking going, look, babe, I got my test results today. I'm clean. And then you got to do that. Great. And now you just contracted it so this bitch got chlamydia. This one's got this. Great. And then you're on the you set still got two the days later. You still got the results uh-huh. from You got the before. results this morning from yesterday. And then tonight you go out and fuck the town. And then tomorrow. And then tomorrow you, sh- you shoot a film with me or somebody else. And then you realize that, that the last three bitches ago you picked up at the club going, yeah, baby, oh, uh, you can't get pregnant? Uh-huh. Great. Well, I don't got nothing. Look. Yeah. I'm a porn star. I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Great. You just don't know that you just picked up something at the bar and brought it to the rest of the industry. Yeah. Only if it's something major. Now, they don't test for herpes. Okay. If they did, there wouldn't be a porn industry. That's like drug testing and food service. Yeah. If, you drug te- if, if you're drug, if you not <laughs> yeah. on drugs or drinking in yeah. food service, That's we fun. wouldn't have food service. Yeah. So they can't. If you tested most of the porn stars for uh, herpes simplex one or two, 90% of the U.S. population, actually the world population, actually has some form of herpes. Okay. Not necessarily like you got those, you know. The nasty ones down below, or you know, that crotch rod uh, hanging off the lip and shit. But everybody's probably had a fever or a cold sore at one point in their life. Yeah. Everybody's had chicken pox. Well, hopefully. What's that's you? a herpes virus. Mono. That's a herpes virus. These are things that just lay dormant in your system. 90% of the population of the world has some form of it. If you tested the porn stars, oh, we're all over like from hamsters. You go to the ABNs, yeah. they actually give us an entire floor because we have the propensity to prop open the hotel room doors. And people walk in and be like, yo, can I get in on this? And they walk in and <laughs> if no, we're, we're like above board. We're like there's a system, there's a, there's a code. Be like, yo, can I get in on this? You ask permission, like, yeah, yeah, come on, join. How First does- thing you do, you walk in, even though like you're not wearing any drawers, maybe it's the jail purse. I think they call the purse pocket, whatever. Yeah. Somehow they whip out these test results and they unfold them because we all keep them folded in the wallet. Yeah. Put it down on the dresser and they just jump right in. Hey, who's got the lube? And it's just like, great, yeah, you know, that Sounds was like fun. The Olympic and then you walk, it is. It's, it's, it's a marathon. It's a sport. Yeah. So they give us our own floor because we don't want these poor little 10 and 11 year olds seeing, you know, men and, and you can't, women. I can't walk. then get on the floor. Uh, 
I can't be like, risk. I can't be like, oh, hey, there's a door open. Hey, I'm Tank. Uh, here's my test results. I'm going to hop in. <laughs> well, everybody kind of knows everybody because I've had sex with somebody that you've had sex with or had sex with them and them and them or the, the, oh, their next door neighbor. Yeah, they're in the, okay, yeah, oh, yeah, you know, oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, I remember you. <laughs> it's like the comedian test never, result, yeah. Yeah. Everybody knows each other. Next. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like a communal, is that they call it? Yeah. Yeah, it's like a bunch of dirty hippies. <laughs> We're all over like white iron rice. If, if, if I don't know who you are, I know somebody you've had sex with. I've seen you on video. Yeah, that was a good one. Oh, yeah, I, I rented that twice. Do you have a lot of fans uh, reach out to you? Mm, or did you? More so now than before. Really? When I went to the AVNs first, I shot my first video at the AVNs, so it, it hasn't been published. Nobody knows about it yet. I haven't hit the front page of the entertainment center yet. Yeah. Uh, that was until the next day. Yay, me. This is the day of the Avians. So we went from that shoot to the Avians, back to the hotel, then a night on the town, the penthouse, Playboy Club, yeah. the whole the whole nine yards, the two short video. I was in a two short video. Really? Somebody slipped me something. One of the other female porn stars slipped me something and we were hanging out all night. I mean, there's pictures of me licking the Venetian wall just to prove I had dry mouth. <laughs> Trying to pull the tail off a pink, giant pink bunny that was making balloon animals. At the Playboy Club that we shot the two short video. I mean, there's pictures. I can't make this shit up. Yeah. There are pictures. Some wife even posted on my Facebook. <laughs> um, just because it's that ridiculous. Yeah. Um, granted, we have to curtail the, the where where it occurred and why I was there. Yeah. <laughs> it, you know, it's a family. It's a family. Facebook. It's a family company. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, you were just at the Venetian in the wall, was I just, looking, I just looking, happened to be in Vegas, you know, doing cherry like, and you're like, let me taste it. Ah. Yeah, it was Angelina. Oh, she's awesome. She's hot too. Do you have a favorite uh, studio, or you have any favorite uh, actors or in the industry? Like, is there any of a favorite? Um, not really. Jeff Mullen, who was with, I believe, Sexy Pictures, but he was more. Upper management, um, talent scout. I don't know. I, I, was, I was an upper level executive. So he was tagging along with me and Kenny and Ron and uh, Jeff Chamberlain. He kind of reminds me of like that Fabio built like him, kind of looked long hair, don't know, a box of rocks. Sweetest person you'll ever meet. So, you know, he's not very smart. Yeah. But he got this one and it takes two hands. <laughs> I didn't work with him. I just got to, you know, romp around town with him. Ron Jeremy was great. Um, he's a special ed teacher, which that kind of blew my mind when I found out. Is he still, or is just like he was previously, like before he started doing? I don't know. There's 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 checkered information about him, about okay. his lifestyle, you know, and what he does. He was a you know special ed teacher, and I think then he got into this. He found his niche as the hedgehog. What does it call him? The hedgehog and something else. Mario. Much. There's 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 so many, but yeah, the hedgehog is what he's usually known as in the industry. <laughs> I've I've been there, right? I've been there, and I've done that. Um, I'm programming his phone as Oral Queen. We swapped <laughs> numbers at the Avia, and he he wandered into yeah the Venetian that day, and uh, put his test results down. And I was actually in the bathroom half hammered, but uh, didn't know my name, couldn't remember my name from the eight days. Must yeah. be the medicine, but. <laughs> yeah, he had me programming his friend's oral queen because he called me to Miami. I was like, it's only a five hour drive for you. Come down. He was opening a nightclub down there. Oh, shit. So he was making guest appearance and he's just like, this is no entourage. At least I'll know somebody here. Yeah. Other than these douchebags, it's Miami. I'm like, oh, okay. I just drive right down there. So that was fun. And then that's when he flew me out. But fuck yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of fun. Lori Lust took me under her wings. Um, she, I didn't start with her. She was in the same video, uh, Fuck My Wife, Please, too. But um, we didn't work together together, but she kind of took me under her wing, uh, drove us to the airport, LAX. We got to witness a driveway on the way. Who the hell does a drive-by in six-lane grid drill? Gridlock traffic is 6 a.m. A drive-by? Like a shooting? Yes, we're all in gridlock traffic. And all of a sudden, the Cadillac in front of us with the bullet hole through the passenger side is now veering off the road and goes and running along the guard the guardrail, whatever, in between, and we're trying to head to LAX. And we're like, what if he's all right? And we see the bullet hole through the side of the window. We're like, yeah. who does, like, a drive-up dr- gridlock shooting? Jesus. I'm like, well, <laughs> if you think about it, it's kind of smart. There's no way an ambulance or a cop car Could get- can get to you because nobody can get anywhere. But you still got to get away so, from it, though. Yeah, but there's so many, there's so many people that could have come from, that bullet could have came from anywhere. 
That's true. That's pretty smart gangster shit, but <laughs> who does drive-bys in gridlock traffic at 6 a.m.? Fucking gangsters. Now that's somebody who went to bed pissed off. <laughs> oh, they stayed up all night planning that shit. Be like, I'm hit 6 a.m. traffic, and we'll get that motherfucker. I'm going to yeah, talk shit about my sister. You still got to, like, sit through the traffic, though. Like, you got to time traffic perfectly so you line up with them in It's traffic. L.A. When isn't there traffic? It's like Atlanta or yeah. Miami. Oh, wow, there's eight lanes on each side. That's pretty It's still impressive. gridlock at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, 10 o'clock at night. God. It's L.A. Just, traffic really sucks. What's the timeline for escorting? And like, when did you start doing that? Like, or how'd, I guess how'd you get introduced? How'd I got you get intru- duped. How'd you get introduced to escorting? I got duped. I didn't know anything about it. You know, no more than any other person in the world. You know, pretty woman. We've all seen pretty women. Yeah, it's kind of like that sometimes. Not always. Depends on where you're located, who you're working with, or for, and the people who are working with you, i.e., the clients. But uh, I was, I got a phone call. Thankfully, it wasn't a you know, disease scare, but uh, <laughs> I get a phone call and I was asked to go up to New York, New Jersey, the tri-state area, and shoot um, a photo. It was a photo shoot. There was two photo shoots or something. I didn't know where the pictures were for, but it was TFP, so I was going to get a copy of the DVD, of all the photos, everything. And there was two small, you know, like amateur scenes, nothing really major, so I go up there and... I think everything's above board, and uh, I noticed after the photo shoot and whatnot, and we're starting to film the scene that I had to keep pointing out to the producer, director person that I was working with, because it was an amateur layout that the, the red light on the camera kept going out. So, first couple times I bitched about it, and he went up and made the red light turn back on. Yeah. But it kept turning back off. Well, <laughs> I, I'm young, I'm not dumb, and at that point, still not full of cum, so that was great. Um, I figured out, well, if you turn the camera on and you don't hit record, well, that's what's going to keep happening. Yeah. So I just finally said, listen, I don't care if you catch this content or not. I'm still going to get paid for the content, whether or not you produce it. So it's not like I get royalties. So whatever, let's get this over with. You know, I'm tired. I want to go home. It's cold because it was the middle of the winter. Uh, whatever. Well, the manager, the production company I went up for, I can't even remember. I think it, was, it wasn't Evil Angel. That's a, that's a. Top name, but it was something, okay. something Angel out of New England area, in uh, New Jersey and Maple Shade, Cherry Hill area. Okay. That uh, he's like, well, when the guy told him that, I really said, I just didn't give a shit. You know, let's just, I'm getting paid for this anyway. I hadn't realized that the only difference between a provider and a porn star is the camera. That's the craziest. That's the crazy part. That's that's the only. That's the really ca- is. the camera is the only thing that makes the. the Differentiate. One gets paid in cash, the other one gets paid in check. Yeah, the room pay taxes. The only thing that's in the room besides you and them is either twenty other people and a camera or no witnesses. Do you think you could ever use that? Be like if you just have a camera with you and just have a setup. If anyone were to ever like could you just be like that's the thing, like there's always shooting gonna content. be content. Yeah. He was shooting content. Yeah. You just got to get them to sign a 2257 form, which is the model release saying that you're over 18 and I can do whatever I want with this footage and you can't say shit about it. You yeah. can pay for your content and your services rendered as per we discussed. Yeah. This is content. It's for a video, whether it's my spank bank or it's going to be on the you know, too hot for Atlanta TV. Yeah. Or PBS late at night. Yeah. <laughs> um, as long as there's a camera in the room, there's nothing illegal about porn. You just have to verify that the... The talent is over the age of 18 and not on the influence of drugs or alcohol or on any medications or without medication, aware of what they're getting into, have no problem with, and at the end, make sure that, you know, did anything happen that you did, didn't agree with, that we didn't discuss, that it up, you have received your pay, great, you now wait for the camera, hold up your ID, yeah. peace, love, and fluffy bunnies, see you the same time next week, and the wink and the click, oh. <laughs> the horse prod sound, yeah. Could you just print out a bunch of 2257 forms and mm-hmm. have a camera? Mm-hmm. And then like... Would you like to borrow one of mine? Is that... Yeah. The forms, not the camera. Yeah. I'm going to get that form for real, though. Yeah, it's a standard 2257 form. It's a model release form. It just says that, you know, as of this date, I am... The sound by, I'm over the age of 18. And yeah. know that all the content produced today that I'm contracted for, you can do whatever the fuck you want with. You can cut it up and you can, you know... Do some weird cut and paste, like Photoshop type shit, and have me blowing a donkey. Yeah, that's great. And then you can make millions off of it. I ain't gonna get shit for it. 
And I can't stop you because I signed my rights away. I'm over the age of 18. I'm consented to letting you film this and do whatever you want with it. I've been paid. Yeah. Have that and have fun with that card hit. Next. <laughs> That's so, how it is. So what uh But you have to keep those on file. You actually have to keep all those. Oh, you have to keep all the twenty two fifty seven. Yeah, the USC twenty two fifty seven. That's when you go to any porn site, any even my website, it'll say right at the bottom, it'll say, you know, uh USC uh twenty two fifty seven compliance on file upon request. Oh, okay. To prove that everybody in any picture on my website is over the age of eighteen yeah. and of sound mind consent that I can do whatever I want with these photos, but if you go, wow, she looks 17, I can go, well, actually, she's 35. The, yeah, I got the form right And here. I win. Fuck you. Yep, so that, that, that is one thing you do have to maintain. I have I have a folder in the back of my file cabinet called Pornocopia. <laughs> and that's where I keep all of my model release forms. If anybody I've worked with, if I do any audio or video recording, where even if it's like one of those, like, we're going to Six Flags, and dead it, and I'm here with Bobby Joe over here. Yeah. How old are you? What's your birthday? Yeah. All right, cool. Great. Sign the form, smile, <laughs> cool, put it in the folder so I can go, yeah, they're like, nah, she was 17 at the time. That's funny because that's our government issued ID. And yeah. And verified we... it and here's today's paper and here's the form. And yeah. and now I'm going to take that video because I have to be an inconvenience and I'm going to Photoshop it to where she's blowing a donkey or my dog. <laughs> and I'm going to make millions off of the bestiality shit. Does, how did, so you go from the, they're like not, you notice the camera's not on. How does that? How does that turn into you? It turned into just, fuck it. I'm still getting paid for this. Yeah. Yeah. You don't get the content. You can't reproduce it to recoup your costs. I'm still getting paid very well for this, and yeah. I did. Okay. And then he took advantage of that and would send people who would show up with a camera, not a video camera, but take some pictures. Okay. I was like, whatever. <laughs> I was pretty like you know laid back. I didn't give a shit. It's not that I lack morals. It's just. Sex is an act. It's a tool. You know, we're not making love. We're not. Yeah. We're not fucking like porn stars. It's simple. It's better. I liked it better instead of being like an ant farm under all those bright lights and uncomfortable positions and I don't say not faking it, but yeah, at I least mean, now it's, not... it's just it's a one on one. I mean, it's not all about okay, you know, from the minute you walk to the door until the minute you walk out. It's not. Yeah. It's not just one big porn scene. It's just two. Human beings, yeah, doing what we are key fitted by our makers. <laughs> one's got an Indy, one's got an Audi. Put them together, we have smiles, miles of smiles. <laughs> but it's not like that from the door to the floor, and then you know from the floor to the door. Yeah. Bye. But you know, it's just two human beings getting to know one another, exploring, working out some kinks mentally, physically, emotionally. And there's a lot of chemistry and stuff. Yeah. And I actually liked it better than porn because it was more personal and less cookie cutter and just you know next and do you feel like you're meet you're getting more able to meet just like more real people i guess i've met all walks of life uh generally i cater to the um upper echelon of corporate executives doctors lawyers some celebrity preachers. Don't, 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 I can't get into that one. <laughs> By law, you cannot do that. Separation, church, state, and law. <laughs> Joel Osteen, what's up, dog? Oh, right. Oh, you know him too. <laughs> Was he on top or bottom of you? No. We fucked. <laughs> <laughs> He's fucked, all right. Um, <laughs> but uh, I don't get too many blue collar. Um, every nationality under the sun. I, I've literally been there, seen that, done it. And a lot of times there's not even, there's not sex involved. It's just somebody wants to sit there and bitch about the, the tuition and the mortgage payment and their wife's frigidness and yeah. their endless hours of work and traffic and overtime unpaid and shitty bosses and bad weather and hurt shoulders. Being a medical professional is great. Can you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> so how did you, um, I guess, transition from... You know, do I know you said you did it kind of in the Northeast. Um, how did you transition to, like, I can do this myself, I kind of want to do this independently? How did you, how did have that transition kind of work, I guess? That's kind of a toughie. After my uh, shady experience up north, I, I went back home, and that was right around the same time that, you know, we, that I told the manager that I was no longer going to do unprotected work and all the stuff. I had to start seeking out my own, uh, my own gigs, basically. 
and, uh, and I think it was Sexy Jobs, I found a listing for a company that's no longer in, in existence up in Boston that was, you know, saying, you know, you can make seven to $9,000 a week, you know, blah, blah, blah. We pay for your flights and, you know, your hotel, this, that, and the other thing. And, and it sounded like too good to be true. So I called and I, I, it was an agency, but it wasn't like your typical agency where you've got like a bunch of girls hanging out in a, an apartment waiting for somebody to come knocking on the door. Um, you know, you're the only person in town and, so they put you up and they take care of everything, all the screening and all that other stuff. And it, it, it was really nice. Like I said, I was getting the upper crust of the Boston, uh, Metro, downtown, Copley, Commons, Back Bay, I mean, the, the top of the top executives. So I was treated like a princess, showered with gifts, and was making money hand over fist. And it, at first, you know, I've had, with, between porn and, and dabbling with that shady experience, I realized that I kind of had a, a knack for, you know, not the sex part, but just for people. You know, whether it be they just need somebody to talk to, a true companion, somebody to take to a business dinner or a party or, you know, they just need, they just really want somebody to talk to or just human touch. Yeah. And I'm a people person due to, you know, my education and experience and with all walks of life, every culture, every magical, every color, shape under the sun. I've been there, done that, seen it all. So it just, every, with every experience, I became better at it and more adaptable, like a chameleon, because that's, that's what they want you to be. They want you to be everything that their wives, their girlfriends, their, their normal life isn't. You know, you, you are their fantasy, their escape. So I worked up there, uh, with a couple of different agency companies, um, there, Atlanta, uh, Let's see, Boston, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. I was all over, up and down the East Coast. And after a while, uh, I, when I came here to Atlanta, I was working for a, an agency that is no longer in existence, uh, along with mostly every agency here in Atlanta, thanks to our local and federal go- law enforcement. Woo! Hey! Um, <laughs> but uh, when they took down all the agencies, they really didn't mess with the independent providers and, you know, I left the the company about six six months to a year before uh, law enforcement came and took down all the extracurricular fun <laughs> here in Atlanta, <laughs> at least on a structured you know group level. So I decided to go independent, and I enlisted the help of a, another uh, independent provider that I had met in passing through luncheons with the, the agency I worked for. And I said, you know, hey, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I will pay you this much for every time you'll screen for me, but I don't want you to just screen these people for me. I want you to show me how you do it okay, sweet. so I can learn. And she was really open to it because, you know, even though I was never high volume, still not now, it's more about the experience rather than the, the, the swinging door, if you will, the turn and burn. That's not me. I see one patient, one client per day as a medical professional and as a provider to make sure that both my patient and my client get 150% of my effort and time and focus and energy, not worried about, you know, oh, honey, it's almost time. So she had her own life and her own business and, you know, kids and family to run. And I didn't want to impose on her, but I wanted to pay her for her knowledge. And I decided to go out on my own because it was just, it was easier because then I can truly mind my own business, literally, yeah. and not have <laughs> anybody else involved in my business in more ways than one. And it was, it was kind of nice to have that flexibility and control over my schedule, my income, travel, everything. You know, I was my own boss, like everybody wants to be. So who that wouldn't want that? It, it, it is. It, it's, got, it's got its perks. It has its drawbacks. You know, when you've got plans to go out with girlfriends for a birthday dinner, you've had this plan for two weeks, and then all of a sudden you get a phone call saying, I'm only in town for tonight, I'm well vetted, and you double check and go, yep, I want to see you for four hours. We were like, well, that's this month, next month's <laughs> rent, plus all the bills in between, or I can live up to my the plans I made to, you know, Damn. get to my sister's birthday dinner, and you know, everyone's going to be there. And I think I came down with a cold, I'm not going to make the dinner. Yeah, oh, ooh. So yeah, it's got its, it's got its perks, but you know you do have to make sacrifices and some tough decisions. Sometimes you know you can't get desperate. That's that's a number one no no. That's one rule of the game, is the minute you start getting greedy, 
or desperate, and I know the bills are due, I know it's almost the first of the month and you don't have the rent, the car payment's due, they're going to repossess shit, your kid needs school clothes, I get it, but if you don't mind your P's and Q's, if you don't do your due diligence to make sure that you're safe, it's not just your own safety and the safety of your family, and you're going to be exposed amongst your peers, and it could be on the front page of the news, you know, all over Google, I mean, there's no hiding from it. Because yeah. you got greedy, or you just you know you got sloppy, and you didn't do your due diligence. Now your family suffers, you suffer, everything suffers, all because you just got greedy and that sloppy, and that also endangers every client you've ever seen, every phone number, every text message that's ever came across your phone. Depending on if you get busted oh, for your sloppiness, that. they will go through three years phone records, they and they will contact all your everybody you've had more than one text or contact with. You know, any consistent in from it could be your ex boyfriend, it could be your mom changed her cell phone number, and they're gonna call and they're gonna tell them why they're call who they are, why they're calling, what is in reference to, and any information they can provide. And anybody who hasn't found out. Your goose is cooked, like Thanksgiving <laughs> style. So, I mean, it's got its pros and its cons, but at least when you're an independent, you control what you find acceptable for screening, who you allow into your life, your home, your in-call, whatever it is, versus relying on an agency. Because you know? you're not, the agency is like, they're just going through the agency, so they can book anybody, whereas you can like decide who exactly you want to see because you're not they pick and choose they kind of like you just show up and the person comes yep. and you don't you, really you know you get a text message saying that your three o'clock is downstairs so i'm sending them up let me know when they arrive let me know when they leave okay so great well they give you maybe if you're lucky 15 minutes we go okay great your your four o'clock is here he's downstairs i'm sending him up it's like you don't even have time to shower eat you know you have no idea when you open that door who's going to be standing on the other side yeah at least as an independent you pick and choose who you want to see, who you want to see again. Yeah. In an agency, it's kind of like you just sit there and wait for for a phone call that may or may not come. And it might be somebody you've seen before and never want to see again or somebody that you never want to see to begin with. And you can't say anything because they own you. Yeah. And, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm an alpha. I like to be in control, even though sometimes I'm a little out of control. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't like being under somebody else's thumb. It's hard, you know, being a business owner and an independent and a sole proprietor, you know, being your own boss. It's a lot of work. To have to rely on somebody else and hope that they screen them properly. That kind of like I was saying about, you know, you get your test results today and you go party in the night and then tomorrow you give it to all the rest of us. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, you may have saw, you know, Amber last week. And then you went and saw some other girl off back page, and you got busted, and now to get your ass out of hot water, you call the agency that you're, you know, on goody-goody terms with, and I open the door, and it's you, and then five minutes later, so is a nice new set of bracelets. The yeah. kinds that come with keys, not with, you know, clasps. Not <laughs> cool. It's just, it's scary. It's a scary world out there. This, yeah. This isn't for everybody. Do you think before you, I guess before you started, did you... Did you have any preconceived notions of what you thought escorting might be like? And then, of course, same as everyone else. Pretty woman, rich guys and Porsches and yeah, whatever's gonna show up and give me bracelets and and wear quarter million dollar necklaces and take me to fancy dinners where I can sling shellfish across the room, tell did, me to catch it and it's all good. Did it differ? Did you did it differ from what your expectations were before the shady experience? I was like, wow, this is very lackluster. Yeah, and then when I worked for Donna in Boston, it was my lifestyle, my accommodations, my clientele, everything was exactly as fancy as the website that yeah. featured me and as all the shit that you saw on you know, Pretty Woman. I mean, it wasn't exactly Rodeo Drive, but if anybody knows anything about downtown Boston, that Copley Commons, you might as well be. We, nice. we actually have our own Rodeo Drive. It's one street over from where I usually stay. And yeah, that's the kind of money you have to make to even drive through downtown there. So, I mean, it had it had all the cool nifty high points that you saw in Pretty Woman. And I had already seen the worst of it before I got to see the best of it. And I just had to find my nice. little niche in between the two. So when you, do you feel like doing, I guess, was there, do you feel like there was a period where you like weren't, like a, a waiver period where you weren't good at it? 
Does that happen? Because I know, like, when, like, I say, like, when I started stand up, I was, like, bad, you know, and it takes a while doing something. But you I know you kind of started. Makes you professional. Yeah, you, you know, your, your you kind of trade. You get better, I feel like, the longer you do something. I was a little awkward and chatty in the beginning, and people, I mean, some people are there just to talk and have yeah. a soundboard, but not be my soundboard because, you know, a lot of people fill the void and nervousness with, you know, nervous ticks or yeah talking let's fucking and, yeah like i can understand talking like <laughs> let's you're not saying anything i gotta say something because well, fucking you this, is, this is uncomfortable you know it is it, and, and you do that and it almost makes them uncomfortable because you're trying to find ways to make yourself comfortable so it just becomes really awkward uh i've only had like one or two bad reviews over the years and uh, one was the agency in boston um they didn't read the client profile. He was looking for a tall, buxom blonde. Um, well, granted, I've got the rack. Yeah. All, all mine. Best breast money can't buy. <laughs> but uh, I'm not six feet tall, broad shoulder, big hips, and, you know, I can bench you. Yeah. I'm a, I was a tiny brunette spinner with great giant rack. Yay! So he gave me a shitty score, a great review, but he gave yeah. me a shitty score, and that hurt me. Because the, the company told me you have to, for every one bad review, you have to have immediately eight good reviews. Eight? Yep. yep. Eight. In order for people to be willing to take a chance on you. It's, but, it's right up there with like bad, it's, a, it's, it's better to have bad credit than no credit. Because that means at least somebody took a chance on you. Yeah. Okay. And that's one of the acronyms in the industry is um, TFFT, uh, taking, taking, T O F T T taking one for the team. Yeah. Meaning like, okay, she's got no reviews, she looks great. Hopefully, you know, the chick behind the door is the, the chick in the pictures. And you know, that's one of the first things it's like, so do I look like my pictures? Maybe a little hair's a little lighter, you know, tits are look a little bigger. But I mean, can't the agency be like, This guy wanted a blonde, we didn't send him a blonde. What the f- I mean, it's just really fucking Well, it was great. Like in that bad review, he gave me a five in looks, but he gave me a seven in performance, and I'm like, all right, because I'm a, a eight nine 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 all day long, and I'm not in blow smoke. I've got a couple tens here and there, but that's because I aim to please, and I'm a people person. Yeah. I adapt, but I mean, they actually stated that you know I contacted the service, you know, two calls to standard two call system. Yeah, I asked for a buxom blonde, and this beautiful brunette spinner opens the door. Great tits, but. That wasn't my fantasy. That wasn't what I was looking for. That's not what I needed to work out my stress and kinks in my life for that yeah. day. She was great, but it wasn't what I wanted. So That shouldn't be on you, though. She's beautiful, but I'm not into brunettes. I'm not into short chicks. Um, well, granted, I'm 5'6". They gotta, fucking, they, gotta, they gotta realize that that's on them a little bit, you know? Well, some guys are into, like, real tall chicks. Yeah. Like, short guys, it's like, you know, don't wear heels. Yeah. Okay, because he's short. Some guys are like... I want them tall, and I want you to wear the highest heels you've got because they want to be like this guy next to the girl that's you know two feet taller than yeah. them, being like, "Yeah, look what I'm sporting." Yeah, though they got their elbow you know above <laughs> their shoulder just to walk you in the room and pull She's out a chair, take two hands. <laughs> yeah, put your hand on my head. Oh, you're so cute. Some guys are into that. Well, that one was into that, so he gave me a great review, but he gave me a shitty score because it wasn't what he needed. Yeah. To scratch that itch or whatever stress relief he needed for that period but there needs to be some adjustments no, but, but no once you realize it's kind of like my like mama says you know find something you're good at and stick with it <laughs> she'd be so proud <laughs> yeah but no you just if you realize you're a people person you know not everybody's equipped to be a bartender yeah you know i i suck at food service i've had three food service jobs and i think at the end of the week i had more in dry cleaning bills than i would have made plus tips if i was a great server <laughs> it was bad so i mean i'm not cut out for food service a lot of people aren't cut out for this but i've always known that i'm i'm an entertainer yeah. i'm comedic you know i i've had shows that have been syndicated i lived in yourpartyhouse.com which was first the howard stern's yourpartyhouse.com which then later became the ron jerby's yourpartyhouse.com and it was a voyeur mansion uh not like that co-ed mansion shit where it's just prostitution and dumb shit and drama it was actually very very classily done but i knew that was right right after i got into porn and right before i got into escorting maybe just a little dabbling of both you know one was tiding off into the other and i lived there and i had i went on a talk show and that just helped me hone my skills behind closed doors oh yeah 
so that I would be better prepared to be versatile behind the other closed doors. Yeah. So I want you to realize you're a people person. You just hone your skill any way you can, but there's no waiver waiver period. I, I've yeah. never heard it called that before. <laughs> I know. I say that, Tri- but I'm like... trial and error period. Yeah, trial and error. Been... I feel like there has to be a better term for that. But... All you have to do is avoid the casting couch. <laughs> if they say, okay, well, let me see what you can do. All right, try you out before I... <laughs> Fuck you, you pig pervert weirdo. Well, yeah. Next. There's a hundred other agencies who would love to have me because I will make you a fortune. Yeah. You will pay me very well and take very good care of me because yeah. I will take make you look good and I will take care of your clients and not steal clients. That's yeah. a good no-no. What do you think, when you transitioned to independent, what do you think your biggest like challenge was, I'd say, like starting out? Well, I have to say it was the screening process. Um that that was foreign to me because basically I get a text message, I open a door, might smile, nod, and play patsy, patty cake, and great, pat them on the butt, send them on their way, text, check out, and let them know that I'm safe. And that was it. Now it's like having that much power and control, but yet being powerless to all the, the vultures and demons of the industry. Of, yeah. You could be law enforcement, you could be a serial killer, you know. Yeah, yeah. How do I know that the last raid and see they haven't found her body in the ditch yet, you know? Yeah. Now, luckily, I'm armed, I'm armed and dangerous. So I'm, I, I'm, I've got beauty, brain, balls, and brawn. <laughs> and firearms. Lots and lots of firearms. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, I protect myself as well as protecting my interests and in the location of my personal residence. I don't have an in-call because uh, that just opens yourself up to, you know, scrutiny. Especially in this county, if I have a, a rental location at let's say ABC condo community and I also sign a lease at you know XYZ a mile away community there's some weird database that they've done here in in Fulton County that uh, when you go to XYZ and you're ready to finalize the paperwork they go well you have a residence at ABC why are you signing a lease now at XYZ condos? You're like, I got two families, motherfucker. What are you? <laughs> I lead the double life, man. Yeah. I got one husband and kids in this one. And I just make sure we don't shop at Kroger at the same time. Yeah. It's none of your fucking business. <laughs> but they're hip to the game because of all the shenanigans and whatnot that's transpired since the, yeah, right before the Super Bowl, during the Super Bowl, uh, here at Mercedes Benz Stadium. Uh, what was that two years ago? Yeah, I think 2017. Yeah, about two years ago. Yeah. Yeah, uh, with all that, they started this database because they wanted to crack down on the saturation of agencies because these the agency puts it in their name. Well, now the agencies are, have been dissolved. Now, independents are pulling together yeah. because, great, if it's, you know, $1,000 a month, everything included, that's you know, we all just throw in this much yeah, and, you know, just we set up like a Google calendar and, you know, I need it from this time to this time and, you know, whatever, be respectful, keep the place clean, great. But it's got to go in somebody's name. Yeah. Well, you're not going to commute an hour to work. Shit, we get a real job downtown if we do that. Yeah, you could just get one close to you. There you go. So we probably live within a couple miles of this place and they go, hey, you have a you have a lease for another seven months at this place. Why are you starting a new lease at this one so early? Are you break your lease? Oh well, now you're high risk. Or maybe you're doing something else. Hmm. You're running a business out of one. You're running. Yeah, a... exactly. You know, operating a business in a residential area is a big no-no. It's not just a city ordinance violation. Yeah. But when there's a lot of traffic, because most of these women aren't that smart to be low volume. Like, okay, there's three of us using this place. You can have one client per day. One, you know, park on this side of the building, cut through the backyard. We'll park there. Okay. You have to have some sort of structure because everybody's watching. Yeah. Who are the cute chicks coming in now? Why are they rolling <clears> bags? <throat> you know, why are these guys looking, wandering down the hallway, looking lost? I know, right? They're like looking at their phones. Knocking <laughs> out the, yeah. Knocking out the wrong door. That's why, you know, people sometimes are told, you know, stay in your car for further instruction, you know. Yeah. Got to make sure you know exactly where you're going so you look like you know where you're going. You walk right in, you go in the place so the neighbor yeah. upstairs and downstairs doesn't go, Oh, is that my Amazon package? No. Oh, it's, it's that bitch upstairs. Oh, it's that bitch downstairs. Oh, yeah. Hmm. And it's like every day. Yeah, and then they meet at the mailbox and go, God, you get a lot of packages. No, I thought you did. Ah, next HOA meeting. <laughs> These fucking neighbors. What the fuck, though? I don't They're, care what my neighbors do. See, that's a thing. It's because, like, I... That's because you have a life. Yeah. 
There's always one nosy neighbor. There's always one busybody. God. That was like, oh, you know, <laughs> hey, do you have company? I, I was going to come over and see, you know, I didn't see your car, but I saw this car in the parking lot that I'm not used to seeing. You know, do you have company? Are you even home? Do you need to take your dog out? Do you need anything? I want to the store. I cannot fuck with that. Ah, keep your friends close. And your nosy neighbors closer. Hell yeah. <laughs> Let them in your house regularly. Yeah. Demonstrate what you can do. Yeah. Offer your services. Give them business cards. Tell them to pass it out to all their friends and give them an incentive. To <laughs> shut their fucking mouth. Keep an eye on your car. Yeah. Any other cars? Anything looking suspicious? You text me and let me know. I always leave my car unlocked. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm, they'll probably know I kidnap my dog because I keep forgetting I let her out. She's so good. I let her out and an hour later I'm like, what the hell's the dog? I go outside and go, oh, look, you're sitting up on the front patio chair. Hi, puppy. Good girl. Yes, I still have a dog. Nobody stole it. <laughs> so, yeah. It's good to have eyes and ears. Yeah. At all times. Definitely. Except for when they're your neighbors. That's yeah. why most of us move every one year. I've I've been at my private residence for, um, I think, when my lease is up next spring, it's going to be, I will have been here. Peaceful, it's secluded, it's serene. Oh, yeah. With the entryway, nobody can really see it. My neighbors, I know what they do, so I know anytime during the day, during like school, regular business hours, yeah. they're not home. Nobody knocks. Nice. It's like, hey, if you, if you text me from the parking lot... Basically, you just knocked by a text. I know you're here. Just walk yeah. in like you know the place. It's perfect. Yeah. You know, so it doesn't draw any attention. If you run into the neighbor, say hi and yeah. go back to your car and tell them you're at the wrong place and look at your phone until they go away and then just scurry in. Yeah. I mean, no harm, no foul. You know, okay. I, I, I see patients here. You come to my private residence. This isn't a call. I don't have any other places. This is me. This is my dogs, my house, my life. This is my mess. This is my clutter. Yeah. This is my decorum. But, yeah, unfortunately, no matter where you go, neighbors are always going to be part of the decorum. Yep. Because a smart provider never works out of a house. How are you going to explain why a garage door opens and a different car pulls in yeah. for an hour at a time? Because one of those neighbors is going to have a sick kid. One of those neighbors is going to have a day off. One of those neighbors is just going to not feel good that day. Yep. And it's going to be like, wow, that's weird. And then they notice they're leaving for work. Well, that's a different car pulling in. They come home from work. Oh, well, that's a different car pulling out. Hmm, it starts to draw attention. Damn. You don't want to put up those flags. So you have to live in apartment living, but you got to keep your nose clean or move all the time. Yeah. And either don't get to know the neighbors, and that, that makes you suspect, or get to know the neighbors. Tell them all about yourself. Introduce your dog. <laughs> Invite them in your house to see that, you know, there's clothes in the closet and in the drawers, yeah. you know? There's not any weird sex swings, you know, creepy... Yeah, so they see it and they're like, obviously, this is just a regular person. I'm this a regular is, person. Not, just... I keep weird hours. I have a lot of guests. I do taxes. I'm a medical professional. Hey, I won't even charge you. If you ever, like, it, like, torque your neck or anything, just here's my number. Send me a text or whatever. If I'm home or, you know, whatever, I'll, come on down. Yeah. I'll throw it on my table. I'll work it out. If you're happy, I'll, I'm not charging you. Tell your friends. Just don't tell them I did it for you for free. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm just this great girl. That explains why somebody's in my house for an hour or sometimes 30 minutes. It's going to be two hours. Yeah. You know, because I like to talk. They know they've been in my house. They sat down for a beer and stayed for five. Damn. You know, and all they do is walk upstairs and get their own beers. No. <laughs> so you just, you know, the more obvious you are, the less obvious you are. Yeah. Do you, uh, when you started, I guess when the adult film, when you started doing adult films, were you able to tell anyone close to you? Same thing with like escorting? Like, were you talking? <laughs> were you? Uh, well, uh, my father, my biological father didn't raise me. Um, he was out of state working, whatnot, you know, or life of an oil rigger. But, uh, he was out of state, so I didn't, I wasn't raised by him. And, uh, as I got older, I was getting ready to get married and you know, start my life, you know, the marriage, the mortgage, the kids, the whole, you know, picket fence type shit. <laughs> Um, so I rekindled or I got in contact with him and we met up and we had a friendship and because he didn't raise me, it was it's kind of like having a confidant. Yeah. I can tell him almost anything because I didn't give a shit what he thought. He, he didn't. Yeah. I'm a self-raised woman. I, he did not contribute to my upbringing financially. Yes, but not any other aspect. So I could tell him anything and he could take it or leave it. Now, granted, we don't say, you know. God, that dress is fucking hideous on you. You go, wow, that color just really doesn't doesn't bring out, you know, your bright skin tone, beautiful eyes. doesn't bring it out. Not, yeah. Dude, take that shit off and go put on some sweatpants and it still look better, that dress. You can't go things. So I, I told my dad that 
you know, I've, I've been doing some modeling, which he knew, you know, because he kept tabs on me. Yeah. That I was doing, you know, Cinemax, Skinemax porn. Good old Cinemax. That was a good, that was a... That like guy's not very bright. Yeah. That, this apple fell really far from that tree. I rolled down the hill, like, miles. Um, so one of his buddies calls him, I guess there's this, there's a site called, like, Yellow, White Elephant, or... No, that's a, address the white elephant in the room. Yellow Elephant? Okay. Something to do with it. It's either white or yellow elephant.com. Okay. It was kind of like your typical porn.com, whatever. Okay, yeah. And uh, one of his buddies from the bar, because I would go hang out with my dad, we'd have drinks, dinner, and I'd give him a kiss on the cheek or a hug, or whatever, kiss him on the lips, like, I love you, dad, bye. I've had his girlfriend for you. Who the fuck is that bitch? He's like, my daughter. And like, yeah, whatever. I'm like, oh, <laughs> if you know my dad's last name, look, the address even matches. <laughs> if you know how to get to the house, don't bother coming over because I'm sleeping over tonight. I don't drive drunk. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, bitch. Dad, she's younger than I am, seriously. But uh, so we had things like this. So everybody knew me and my father because we were kind of like, Frickin' frack. He looked young enough. I looked old enough. Yeah. That they thought we were a couple, and they was like, "That's no, that's my kid." Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. I'm... And it was great. But some one of his buddies from the bar goes, "Yo, so and so, I was on the whatever elephant site, and I found this video. Dude, it's your daughter." And he's like, "Holy shit!" Blah blah blah. This dumb fucker couldn't just go, you know, dad. Deny, deny, deny. We're like, yeah. oh yeah, wow, that looks a lot like my kid. That's not her though. Dude, that's cool. Uh, have a good night. I'll see you at the bar. Well, yeah. Fuck you. You fucking idiot. Goes, oh shit. So he calls me two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah. I thought you said you were doing Cinemax porn. I go, well, yeah. You don't see anything, just like Cinemax. I'm your kid. <laughs> I saw everything. I said, did you just tell me that you watched the whole oh, video? Oh, God, dog. And he went, yeah, I saw everything. And I go, Dad, not only is it disturbing that you're too fucking stupid to deny, 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 <laughs> and then chastise me during normal business hours, not fucking like 1, 2, 3 in the morning. Yeah. When you found this out at 11, how many times did you watch it, you sick fucker? <laughs> I said, but you can't even, you're not smart enough to lie to me and say, I didn't watch it. I turned it on and immediately turned it off when yeah. you're just a sick perverted fuck. You didn't yeah. raise me, so even though I am your blood and blood, but, yeah. you know, I'm kind of like, you're a really hot BFF that happens to be blood-related. Yeah. But it's like, you couldn't even deny, and then you watched it? So that was kind of a breaking point with him and I. We didn't talk for a couple of days. Yeah. And he apologized for no other reason other than calling me so late. Yeah. <laughs> but he became my safety checkpoint. So if I was flying out of town to a new agency or, like, like I told you earlier, being stranded in New Jersey at that one point. And thank God, you reach out and touch a porn star. And sure yeah. as shit, they came through for me. They, we really are a family. It's weird. But, you know, I would say, all right, Dad, uh, I'm flying out. I can give them the specifics. I'm flying out to this town that I, I land. So I'll, let, I'll text you and let you know that I landed safely. Sweet. When I checked in my hotel, blah, blah, blah. If anything feels weird or hinky. The, I will let you know the address of where I'm at, what time I'm getting there, what time I'm leaving. If you don't hear from me within 15 minutes, call my phone after three repeat call tries. You don't get me. Call 911, and I want you to send them to this address of where I'm at. Because if I can't answer my phone, there's probably a reason. Yeah. And the faster somebody gets to me, the safer the outcome, the better the outcome will be. Fuck yeah. And he was weird about that, but he appreciated the fact that, at least I, even I did, that I had somebody to reach out and say, hey... I'm doing something questionable. I'm not going to give you the details. You don't need to know. All I need to know is where I'm going to be, what time I'm getting there, what time I'm leaving, and I will have communication with you, not throughout, but before yeah. and after to let you know that I got there safe, I'm <clears throat> leaving safe. That's kind of like in the Stina, with Stina, same thing with her mom. Like, like she talks to her mom before and after, and it's just like it makes everything a lot, a lot better. It does. It helps. I mean, there's times where he's not home, and I'll leave it on his voicemail and say, Dad, da 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 Here's the address, here's the name, here's all the information I have. That's all you need to know. I'll let you know this way I'm leaving. I will text you or call you and say, you know, hey, you know, we got to talking, lost track of time. Yeah. You know, da da da, da. It's probably going to be closer to whatever. He knows by the sound of my voice if I'm under duress. Yeah. I get high-pitched, and I do that deliberately. When I'm really drunk. Yeah. Or when something ain't quite right. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got, we got kind of tied up and. uh it's why they close it before where I get done with this and uh, I love you. Okay, I'll talk then. Bye. And he's like, What the fuck? God, you said, mm. Yeah. Oh, ding, ding, ding. All right, cool. She's got until 345. Yeah. <laughs> Not four. 
Mm, okay, great. She's not calling me. I'm calling her. Yeah. Or I'm fucking driving over there. Yeah. Okay, I had to do that once. Really? But uh, it's good to have that. But yeah, you, know, you really can't tell. Porn, you can tell people. Because everybody watches porn. Yeah. Everybody's come across some pop-up ad. Everybody's yeah. known somebody who's even shot a cell phone video and sold it or ended up online or spited it in an X. So, I mean, we've all been on camera doing something lewd and lascivious. It's out there. You can't hide from the internet. There, yeah. You can't hide, period. It's it's all out there. It's good. What, Snapchat? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing's lost forever. It's called the internet. Yeah, no. It's called archives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's okay to tell that, but it's really hard to tell somebody that you know, you're a campaign because the first thing they they pop up the p word or the h word, and I don't mean porn or hallelujah. And they don't understand that you know they're like, well, it's not like Pretty Woman because that's just a movie. Yeah. And then they see all this shit on TV about Vegas and the Vegas Strip and people on the street corner and all of the negative connotations. But, you know, all the people that uh, have the you know, prostitution or hooker connotation are those who have a uh, a menu, if you will. Uh, you know, you can do this for this much. You know, they've got a set price range because uh, legally... So you'd say there's a difference, like a... Oh, there's a huge difference. You know, okay. I'll let you do this, but it's going to cost you that. Well, you know, now you're charged. Now you're actually bartering money for... Services. Services rendered. Yeah. When a provider or companion or an escort, I mean, we do you're that. paying someone to hang out. And... Basically, you are paying me. Time is money. Yeah. You know, we, we're not guaranteed time. Time is precious. Well, time is worth money. You're paying me for my time. What happens between two... Consenting over the age of 18 adults behind closed doors is between those two consenting adults. Yeah. If you want to compensate me for my time that you're utilizing, that's fine. Wouldn't everybody be able to use that defense? Who said they don't? Yeah. That's why there's very specific stipulations. Like, you know, I, I've, I've had a couple girls work for me. Now, I didn't run an agency or anything fancy like that, but I took. Others under my wing got them out of a pimp agency setting where they are just turn and burn, turn and burn. That's all they are. They're just a, a tool to be used for the company to make money. Yeah, they make money, but at the end of the day, it, it's ugh. so I took a couple girls under my wing. But I mean, I have my own set of rules. You know, like the two call system. That's that's you know, you yeah. check in, you check out. You know, I don't expect you to. Oh, honey, you have fifteen minutes left. Do you want to extend? That just totally cheapened it. You know, it's about the experience, not the, the, the numbers on the clock. I mean, you might want to ask, you know, hey, I'm not a clock watcher. Do you have any engagement places you need to be that were, you know, I will keep you on a time schedule. But otherwise, I mean, let's enjoy. Let's get to know each other. Let's have some fun and talk. And, you know, two human beings, experience, connecting, chemistry, whatever. Just be human. Don't be a clock watcher. You know, if you get paid in the beginning... You are paid for like, hey, I plan on staying this long, but again, that what two consenting adults, we ran late, we talked too much, we had a couple of drinks. I don't do you mind if I stay another half hour to sober up. You know, I have to step outside and call my, you know, check them, tuck my kids in, call my wife, let her know I'm stuck in traffic, whatever. That's fine, two <laughs> consenting adults. But you pay me up front for the time you scheduled. That's great. You pay me at the end? Well, you're now com- compensating me for what. You feel I deserve for the services you received in the preceding time before I received payment. So it's easier just get paid right up front. Don't touch it. Don't look at it. Don't ever count it in front of them. Hopefully, the people you allow in your life, your house, your in-call, you trust them. They're well vetted that they're not some sick asshole that gives you an empty envelope. I've only had that happen once. Really? Fuck. Yeah, I ruined him. <laughs> not legally but I ruined him he's, he's never been a a provider since yeah I mean you get blacklisted and it's like well oh, yeah, that like, one time uh, I did that thing now I can't see anyone ever for the fucking history of forever yeah then you, you fuck me once shame on you fuck me twice <laughs> <laughs> no fuck you no fuck you <laughs> but uh no don't, don't touch the money yeah uh, I didn't know you left oh there's an envelope over there I had no idea yeah we're just we were just we were just we were getting together to hang out for an hour or whatever, kill time while sitting in traffic. Yeah. I did. 
You never touched it. If they were in camera, any, you never discussed money. Yeah, no. No, that's a, that's that's against the law. That's, oh, really? That's prostitution. When you are discussing, oh well, so if I give you this much, can we at least do this? Oh yes, yeah, but I'm saying like if I'm like term. text if, messages over the phone in person, don't matter. You walk in, you put it in an obvious location, plain yeah. sight, preferably an envelope. So you have to trust them that the envelope's right. Yeah. You don't count it in front of them. You don't touch it. Yeah. Because, oh, I didn't even know that was there. I mean, you said you're just going to come by. We're going to hang out and, you know, catch up. Because you know each other better. You know, like I'm fur from a friend. And, you know, he seemed like an okay guy. What? I, I never agreed to anything. I never said anything. Yeah. Prove it. I never discussed anything. There was no transaction that took place. It's just a hi, hello, come on, sit down, gonna get you something to drink. Yeah. Let's shoot the shit. Let let let's shoot a podcast. Yeah. There's nothing illegal going on here. Yeah. But oh, oh look, there's an envelope over there. Oh, what a sweetheart. <laughs> Great. Nobody did anything wrong. There's two consenting adults that arranged a meeting. Yeah. Terms and conditions are already specified where you found this number, email address, and yeah. You gave me enough info to make sure you're not an asshole. And you've checked my reviews and know I'm not an asshole. So we have two non-assholes over the age of 18 getting together. Just hang, hang out, out and kick it. Yeah. What happens, happens. Hey, sometimes there's no chemistry. Sometimes nothing happens. But it's always nice, you know, when when nothing happens, leaves. And, oh, look, is that an envelope on the oh, table? God, oh, God, what He's the... such a sweetheart. He didn't, <laughs> ah, he must have known it was my birthday, like, two, three <laughs> months ago. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, at least, didn't, at least didn't lug a camera in here. No? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's tricky out there. But, uh, <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fucking scary. But, but yeah, going from porn, it was easier to deal with one person in the room so you can give focus to one thing. And, you know, sticking with that after the low period and you kind of be like, yeah, and there's different walks of life. You just got to learn to walk their pace. And just be everything that their wives and whatever's aren't. And that just brings, you know, increases your reputation. As your reputation grows, so does your client base. And yeah. you, you meet different walks of life and, you know, different cultures. And you learn new things. You get to experience new restaurants and be able to afford to travel to places you never imagined. And still have the bills paid at home. And the kids got the school clothes. And you got your college books. And yeah. your car payments paid. And, you know, you don't have a lot of worries other than... L.E. looming over your back or that nosy neighbor that's going to go to HOA and go, there's a lot of traffic over and there's a lot of this. There's cars coming and going. Yeah. You know, you just got to mind your P's and Q's. Keep your, <laughs> keep your friends close and your, your nosy neighbor's even closer. Invite them yeah. in. You know, just, just be mindful. You wouldn't want that in your neighborhood before you got into this. You don't yeah. want to be that person in the neighborhood that everyone else is saying, Oh, there's some shit going there. on. There's over some there. shit going on over yeah. there. You don't need eyes on you. What you're doing is not illegal. It's questionable if it's immoral, but you know that's between you and whatever your belief system is. And I don't mean religion, just in general. But uh, yeah, you don't want to be that person in the neighborhood. You don't want that person in your neighborhood around your kids. Don't be that person. Just just be an upstanding citizen. You know. Well, we're we're all upstanding adults. citizens yeah. here. This is yeah. deal with only consenting over the age of eighteen adults. Don't talk about anything over the phone, but we've seen enough movies like Goodfellas, my favorite, <laughs> to know you don't talk about anything over the phone. Don't put it. Mama says you don't put anything in writing if you don't want nobody to know about it. Deny, <laughs> deny, deny. That's real talk. <laughs> Dad, if you hear this, deny, deny, deny. <laughs> um, but yeah, just just be you. Just be smart and do your due diligence. That has been part one of my part two episode with Giabella Ferrari. Uh, shout out to Gia, but Giabella, thanks for coming on the podcast. I really do appreciate it. Uh, listeners, that has been episode 12. Episode 12 is in the books. Episode 12 is done. It's out of here. If you have not yet, give us, give us a rest. Subscribe. Write us a review. Give us a rating. That really does... Uh, Help for new podcasts. Well, we're still new. Uh, also, give us a follow on the old Twitter, Instagram, Full Service Pod. Write to the podcast. Let me know what you think. Write a little love note. Full Service Pod at gmail.com. Let me know. Uh, my, co- my condom offer that I mentioned at the beginning of the episode still stands. If you need condoms and you can't afford them, or you really just want $5. <laughs> 
<laughs> Send us an email. Let me know what you think about the podcast. Be like, I need condoms, and I will Venmo, Cash App, PayPal you five dollars. Limit eight people, or if you know, I decide against it. But definitely eight people. <laughs> But no, this has been uh, episode 12. We'll be back on Tuesday, Christmas Eve with them luminaries, baby. <laughs> we'll be out there. Shout out to everybody who's also uh, not celebrating Christmas. Hanukkah's on Sunday. Uh, Kwanzaa, I think, is a thing still. Uh, but no, shit. <laughs> Fucking, we'll be back. We'll be back every Tuesday. I'm on a show. If you're listening to this on Tuesday, I'm on a show tonight at Baker Dude. At 8 p.m. That's in Atlanta. Fucking click the link. Come to the show. It's gonna be it's gonna be a good time. I might dress up as Santa. I might not. Who knows? <laughs> but no, we'll be back next Tuesday, Christmas Eve, with part two with Giabella Ferrari. Uh, we're out. Peace. Peace.